as we speak anyway, the war between Israel and Hamas has come to a, at least a temporary close. I don't know that that uh, conflict is ever going to completely be resolved. I tend to doubt it. My understanding is they're already, Hamas is already back to trying to build tunnels, etc., that are going to continue to do more damage. But you, during that Gaza war, you visited believers in Gaza. How many true believers are in Gaza? You know, there's one point eight million people in general, mm-hmm. and there's about twenty five hundred people that would fall under the Christian flag. This would be all combined Catholic, Greek, Orthodox, and so forth. Born again, though, yes. I would say maybe just a, a couple hundred. These are the kind of people that I visit, minister to, encourage, help, support, pray with, preach, and teach to, that with our partnering uh, underground ministry in Gaza. Yeah, but you say the believers in Gaza are broken, and and by that you mean what? When I say broken, Janet, I mean they are scared because most of the times people around the world don't know how to help them because most people around the world cannot enter Gaza. They're broken in the concept of sometimes the Bible, they forget that the Bible is more than a mere ink on paper, that the Bible is real. The Bible says, God says, my words are life and my words are alive and life. And I think sometimes they forget. So when I go into Gaza, not only do we take in food and support, and we help them with their, you know, financially and so forth. Most important, out of all the stuff that we do on a physical, tangible level, I go in there, I remind them God's promises because sometimes it to them becomes ink on paper. I take that ink and I make it a real okay. life, practical, tangible feeling with between them and the Holy Spirit. I want to read something here that you sent out. Again, I'm talking to Pastor Stephen Curry. He heads, uh, he and his dad had the Holy Land missions in Israel. They are Arabs who love not just Muslims, but uh, Jews as well. Amen. And they have an outreach to just about anybody who will listen to the gospel in that part of the world. But I want to read something you send out. You can learn more at uh, holylandmissions.org. Do I have that right, Stephen? Holy Land? Yes, ma'am. Holylandmissions.org. Holy Land yeah. You write this. Since last week's video entitled Churches in the Crossfire, some Hamas followers and supporters in the West Bank caught the news that, again, I traveled to the border of Gaza and spent time in prayer for Gaza and Israel. Following my prayer time, I then visited Jewish-Israeli families in southern part of Israel, families that are poor and needy and uh, who are affected by what is happening between Israel and Hamas. The problem that these Antichrist Hamas followers and supporters have is the mere fact that I am showing love and reaching out to the enemy, the Jews, even though I, as a Christian, have only one enemy, and that's Satan. To the Middle Eastern mindset, by default, I as an Arab must have hatred, animosity, and the desire to fight against Israel at all costs. Then you go on to say, statements and threats recently or previously made on our Facebook and other sources in Arabic, you are a failure and a disgrace to the Arab-Palestinian world. We know your efforts to evangelize the Muslims in our land, Palestine. You will pay a price. This pastor, Stephen, we know his location. We should all rise against him and protest outside his church. He needs to be taught a lesson. Why are you telling the Jews about your Jesus and helping them? You are a traitor for comparing us Arabs to the enemy, the Jews. How do you come I don't want to say combat this, Stephen Curry, but how do you deal with this on a daily basis? You know, uh, Sister Janet, just reading those notes, uh, even though they were they were my notes, put shivers down my spine. It should because it's just a sober reminder the the kind of hostility I live in on a daily basis. I made a decision, Jen, and to those who are listening, I made a decision when I was sixteen that I will make every moment in my life count for something bigger than myself. And I want to honestly say with uh, with true heartfelt emotion and response is that I've tried to do that every single day, not looking back, but moving forward, knowing that my time on earth is numbered. And I want to make the largest effect of difference I can while I'm still here on earth. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall mm-hmm. be called the sons of God. To be honest, Jen, I don't think about... You uh, don't. Oh, I don't think about the what if or what could happen. I just, I think about what can I do to make a difference. And that's that's the kind of motto I, I want to live under is what can I do to make a difference rather than thinking the consequences. I think of the blessing of it. 